In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 drawing prompts to have more fun and get more done nature journaling at home. Look at those cool shadows. Now, instead of just drawing with a Sharpie right on my hardwood floor, I don't think my landlady would appreciate that very much. Now that I've backed up to where the shadows hit in a way that I can draw, I'm going to just go ahead and outline them. And you can see that these leaves are moving and stuff, so it's not gonna be totally precise, but this is a good thing to do if you're just warming up. I do this when I'm outside and I have low energy. It's also a good way to create sort of an abstract pattern on your page, which can be a good way to start a new nature journal, for example. This drawing prompt is great when you don't have much time, much energy, or you just want to warm up. By going back in with your watercolor and doing a solid or graded wash, you also just kind of loosen up your watercolor. This is really good if you want to get more bold with your watercolor. Now that we've warmed up a little bit by tracing those shadows, we're going to go to the next prompt. And I usually use one of these frames when I'm nature journaling in the field and want to paint a landscape. But since I'm inside, I'm actually going to use that. A window frame is the perfect way to frame a landscape. And the exposure is a little bit messed up. But by using the, by using the window there, I can, I can automatically, I'm automatically having to frame what I see through the window. So I'm going to do a little landscape painting looking out that window. If you've seen my other landscape painting videos, you know I like to start by blocking in the shapes and focusing on the composition. Now this painting doesn't end up being one of the best watercolor landscape paintings I've ever done, but the whole point is just to realize that this is possible from home and that the window framing effect is actually super useful. If I did this every day, it would be great. Number three, drawing from a book. While this might seem like an obvious one, I feel like drawing from books is a lost art and is underappreciated. One thing that I like to do is get free books or cheap books from library sales, especially hardbound ones that lay flat. This makes a huge difference when you're trying to draw from them. The content is also important. This particular book has a lot of fascinating ideas and diagrams. By looking at diagrams and interesting content such as this, it will add a lot to your nature journaling instead of just pretty pictures. This is another amazing book. So look in other places. A friend of mine, JP, gave me this one. And even though it's about sport fishing, the science content is amazing and the images are as well. Look at how it lies flat. By, by lying flat like that, it makes it so much easier to draw from. You can also draw from field guides, and they seem like an obvious choice. And a John Muir Law's field guides is especially a good one. However, drawing from field guides has the disadvantage that you have to hold the pages open with one hand. This is a less comfortable and can be hard. But one thing you'll notice that I did is I just started drawing from the very first page I opened to. Field guides can be really distracting because there's so much interesting content. So if you just flip randomly to a page and start drawing from there and create some type of challenge where you just tell yourself you're going to flip to any page and draw something, that would be a really good approach. Now you can see that when I added color, I put the book down because it was hard for me to do color while using one hand to hold the book open. I've been drawing at my desk for a while and I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. So instead of my snack being a way to procrastinate drawing, I'm going to make my snack an inspiration and motivation for more drawing. Get my stuff here and go into the kitchen. All right, what should I snack on? Looks like I've got some citrus fruit here. That ought to be perfect. In the last three drawing prompts, we focused mostly on the visual and the aesthetic of our subjects. So in this one, I'm going a little more analytical. I'm measuring the width of the fruit 
compared to the size of the seeds and the width of the skin and looking at those ratios. Because remember, nature journaling is not just about drawing plants and animals, it's about paying attention and studying and analyzing and asking questions and numbers and diagrams are an important part of that. The fifth drawing prompt for nature journaling at home is draw something in your refrigerator. There's probably lots of interesting things in here that you can draw, but I'm gonna do a full episode about this next week. We started with five nature journal drawing prompts that you can do at home without the use of a computer because when you're at home, the computer and the internet can be very distracting and you might just spend more time looking at pictures than doing your own drawing. So we did those first five. Now we're going to talk about five that you can do online. The first one that is a great warm up is to look at nature documentaries on YouTube and watch them in slow motion and sketch from slow motion. Here are some hyena studies that I did while watching slow motion videos of animals on the Serengeti before my Tanzania trip. Then the next one is to do a species profile from Wikipedia. So recently I, and this is a really good one, if YouTube is too distracting, then go to Wikipedia and choose an animal or a plant and then do a species profile on them. Wikipedia has photos and information. There also can be maps. So it's really easy to create a complete nature journal page based on information from there. Another one, and I did a whole video about this, is draw a landscape from a photo. Now you can draw a landscape from a photo that someone else took, but I prefer drawing landscapes from photos of my own. So if you have taken photos on other nature journaling outings, Look through your photos right now. You probably have a ton of cool ones. So go in there, find one, and watch my video about how to draw a landscape ito from a photo. Prompt number four. Another great way to use the internet, and one way that I found is the least distracting, is to nature journal with other people. So it's been really cool lately. Some people from the Nature Journal Club have organized these video calls where lots of people get together on a conference call. So instead of getting together on a conference call to talk about work, why not Nature Journal together? It's sort of like a study hall. So I did one recently with Stephanie Dole and a bunch of other people, and Stephanie showed some of her uh, tarantulas that she has at home, and we all nature journal together. So the benefit of that is even if those people are on the other side of the world or stuck inside, you can still nature journal together with other people, and that is motivating. And what I found is that while I'm sitting there, even though other we're not necessarily talking the whole time, just because I know that my other friends are nature journaling and drawing also, that encourages me to keep drawing. So get together a group of friends. You can do a Zoom call uh, or a Facebook Messenger or whatever, and all of you, even if you're not chatting the whole time, you could draw together and help motivate each other. The fifth prompt for drawing at home is to use webcams. Lots of organizations such as the California Academy of Sciences have webcams. They have one on the Farallon Islands. They have this coral reef one, which they turned the lights off on right when I went to it. But it's on a timer and the lights come back on for the fish and for the invertebrates that are growing there. So I went and I checked out some of the other ones. They, Like I said, they have this Farallon Islands one where you can see the nesting seabird colony, which is pretty crazy to look at. And I was looking for some of their other ones. Oh God, penguins, no, I hate drawing penguins. I'm afraid of drawing penguins, so I had to find, let me find something else. Okay, so I'm gonna look at another one of my favorite nature centers. And a lot of these places are doing more live cams than usual because um, a lot of them are closed right now. So, ooh, jellyfish. Drawing jellyfish would be really fun, and I love the shapes, but, ah, oh gosh, they're moving so fast. This is going to be, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can draw these right now. I might have to come back to this channel later.
Oh wow, those are really trippy. This one also comes with music, so when you go uh, watch this one on their YouTube channel, it comes with music, but let me see if I can find something else that's more, oh here we, go. oh my gosh. This one, there's also music for this one, and I've drawn at this exhibit at the Monterey Bay Aquarium before, and it's really fun. They have seven gill sharks, which are this ancient type of shark. They have sturgeons. Um, I think they have a, uh, is that the giant bass? California uh, sea bass, a uh, uh, really endangered fish, a giant one. I think they have striped bass, leopard sharks. I think that's the striped bass right swimming through right there. Um, and yeah, this is really fun. I, I did some sketches from this. This is a really fun, fun, fun one. So definitely check out some of these webcams. I think it's a, a useful new frontier for nature journaling. Oh my gosh, wait, hold on. What's wrong with that bat ray? There's something doesn't quite seem right about that. Um, I'm not totally, sh I'm not a bat ray expert. I think those are bat rays. It just seems, oh yeah, that doesn't seem quite right. Drawing from that aquarium webcam was so immersive that I even got my hair wet and just had a great time drawing the bat rays and the sharks in live action. The webcam thing is something I haven't done very much yet. I'm definitely going to try nature journaling from them more and I'm going to make a whole video about it in the future. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, comment something down below for an idea for a future video, and subscribe to my channel. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out these two useful links here.